Hey guys, this is Camfree15 back at it with another video for you guys. And I am back with another Black Clover manga. Well, not manga chat. <laughs> soon, soon, guys, soon. Uh, arc review for you guys. And this time we're discussing the next arc after the Elf Reincarnation arc, which is the, I call it the Heart Kingdom arc, um, where Austin Company just. Go to the Heart Kingdom, get the understanding there, as well as we kind of get some more background information before they end up going to the Heart Kingdom. And this is essentially the prelude to the Spade Kingdom arc and everything. But um, yeah, let's get into this video and everything. So yeah, now the Heart Kingdom arc covers manga chapters 215 to 228 and anime episodes 121 to 157. Now, the thing is, um, you know, after the events of the um, uh, Elf Reincarnation arc and everything, we get the whole reunion between Julius and Vongeance. Vongeance actually freaking um, atone. well, I wouldn't say atones, but he apologizes to Julius for what he did. And he's willing to actually go to prison and go to jail and serve the time, which... You know, when you kind of understand this whole thing, it's like, well, technically, Vongeance could have probably given himself up and said he was the main culprit, and maybe Asta doesn't have to go on trial for all of this and stuff like that. But Julia says, no, I don't want that to come in. Just live your life, um, and this time, now that you know, hey, make sure you don't make a mistake like that again, and Vongeance pledges to, use his, to serve his grimoire under... Um, to, ser to serve his grimoire under um, him, uh, under under Julius. So that's what he's going to be doing, and that's kind of his whole character redeem. Now, when they kind of get back and then things are kind of chillaxing, now Julius kind of has a talk um, with some members of the Black Bulls and everything, and he goes on to tell um, and goes on to say that the Clover Kingdom will end up being destroyed by another country, um, which I'm guessing was hinting at the Spade Kingdom and everything. Um, because they're honestly the most powerful force in the um, series now. Um, he also goes on to say that Asta will die, and that he has the power of a devil within him. So that black, um, the black form Asta always goes into, well, it's essentially a devil form. It's a devil transformation, which it was interesting. Now, he goes on to say, like, the way to prove it is the fact that you have this little th horn called the wag which is just symbol it symbolizes that he has a devil within him and everything now he goes on and and essentially that's Asta's curse essentially Asta has a curse on him and everything so interesting to say the least um now on this one julius kind of goes around and talks about how the structure of the well black clover world is structured the fact that there's four different kingdoms um just like cards just like obviously just like the cards spade hearts clover and um diamonds and stuff like that you know when you play you know obviously regular cards and everything he goes on to say that the first is the militant nation um the diamond kingdom and has a powerful army because they're scholars of sorcery black magic and human experimentation we've already talked about this the next um country is to and that is i believe to their west to the west of them is the neutral nation the heart kingdom which they have adapted their rich nature natural land to have mastered their own unique style of magic and we even see that you know the heart kingdom they have like you know they have crazy types of magic like a, they even have s some semblance of a type of magic where I, f I forgot what it was like but it's like they can just do it without really saying the word and they can just be like it's just freaking crazy and everything um so yeah, that, that was the whole thing. You know, we see later, like, oh, they just, you know, kind of do, like, mana writing or something like that, and that element actually works of how your know, magic adapts to what you want it to do based on how it's written and stuff like that, which I thought was pretty cool because it's a unique way how to use magic and everything, which goes to show you that, you know, these countries kind of use magic differently from each of the different countries and stuff like that. Um, and then he goes on to say that the last kingdom, the spade kingdom, is the demon nation, which they have achieved supremacy by serving the ancient horror that slumbers within the extreme cold of their massive land. Now, he, Julius also goes on to say the spade kingdom has expanded their influence 
um, into the grand magic zone into their kingdom. And essentially the grand magic zone is this very dangerous like land with crazy amounts of magic power where there's like creatures and everything that are OP as shit. Um, which is crazy, which is thing. And it's like a like it's like essentially a, a area of the land where no newcomers should ever think about even trespassing or passing by because it's that dangerous and everything. But um, this is when the thing happens and stuff like that. And this is when, well, obviously, um, Julius goes on to tell Oslo, like, listen, dude, you're going to be put on trial in a few uh, days because uh, they're looking for somebody to blame for this whole incident that happened with the Eye of the Midnight Sun. And sadly, you're going to be the guy that's going to be the scapegoat of all this. So uh, I'm sorry. There's nothing I can do. All you need to do is just probably not bring up anything about the devil, and you probably should be good to go. Anyways, what happens is, well, Asta and Nero, um, who Nero is actually now a new member of the Black Bulls, too. She's a new member of the team now. Um, her and Asta kind of get pulled away. And lo and behold, it's they get arrested by the Magic Parliament and they're taken on trial. And the judge is this guy named uh, um, Dum, Dum, Dum Nascio. Um, and he comes across kind of like a freaking prick, to be honest. I don't really, even to this point now, I still don't even fucking like the guy. Like, I think he's just an absolute asshole and he's not even giving us a shot. And essentially the whole thing is in this whole scene, they're trying to, you just have all like these Royal members and everything. And they're just trying to convict Asta really of a crime. He really didn't commit. But like I said, when you get into these predicaments where there's a huge attack or a huge devastation and destroying, there's always that type of thing where there's a scapegoat involved in this whole situation. And Asta and Nero are the scapegoats. And they kind of point out the fact, well, you guys are cursed. Don't you see that girl? She's your accomplice. She's got the horns and everything. So you've got to be inhabiting a devil and stuff like that within you. And Asta's obviously like, no, I'm not. Listen, we fought the devil in the Shadow Palace. And guess what? He tricked everybody. It wasn't, I didn't, I had nothing to do with this. I was, if anything, I was saving your country and stuff like that. So obviously Dom, Dom Nascio is like, okay, if you're not going to explain yourself, then I guess there's going to have to be somebody else that's going to have to take the fall. And lo and behold, you never thought it would get freaking how dirty the Clover Kingdom would get, but they actually bring in Gosha's sister, Marie, into this whole fold from the standpoint. She's like, he's like, Dom Nascio is like, well, if you didn't do it, then guess what? Marie is going to be the one to get killed um, instead. And that's the thing. Also, we'll get killed. He's going to be put on trial. And if he's convicted guilty, he's going to be killed. Um, and they bring out Marie and everything. And obviously, they're like, Dom Nascio is like, listen, if you say you're, if you say, you're telling the truth as you is, that means you won't mind if this little girl dies. Um, so yeah, now again, I think it's kind of fucked up that they would kill a freaking child to try to have Oz to come out and, you know, let himself, which goes to show you how corrupt this fucking kingdom is. Even, you know, the Clover, Clover, Clover Kingdom isn't all that good either. Like, they're not even giving Asta a fair trial. They're just like, well, you did it, and stuff like that. Even though technically Asta was the guy saving the damn world um, alongside of the other Magic Knights. That's why I kind of say it's like, I kind of did wish, do, did wish that Vonjins kind of took the fall for this um, and everything. Because then he could have just probably came in and be like, it was me. I'll gladly go in and stuff like that. But obviously, you don't want to kill a character off like Vongeons like that. But, you know, it is what it is. Um, eventually, what happens is Asta just transforms into his dark Asta form to save Marie. And it kind of proves everybody's points. Like, oh, he was telling the truth. He is inhabiting a devil within him and stuff like that. And it's getting to the point where, okay, Asta's going to be convicted um, of this crime and everything that he didn't commit, and then all of a sudden, the black, all the Black Bulls members come in, and they kind of say, listen, dude, if you're going to attack one of our, one of our owns, well, then guess what? You're going to attack all of us, uh, or you're going to, you're going to, you have a problem with all of us, and all the Black Bull members are there. Same typical trope we saw all the way back to the Royal Knights exam arc when they were willing to defend Finral's honor. Same thing here. We already know that the Black Bulls are a one unit, one united family and everything, and they're going to come to each other's aid, whether they have to go up against the whole damn government or not. 
um, and stuff like that. And uh, anyways, it's looking like Yami's about to throw down with Dalmacio, but then Fuegoleon, who I forgot to fucking mention last week, fucking shit. Um, I s- completely skipped over that standpoint, too. Um, so I guess I'll get this out the way now. Because if you probably, you probably freaking like, you forgot Fuegoleon Fugu- while I address it here. Um, and stuff like that. Uh, yeah, Fuegoleon, I forgot to mention last thing. That was like one of the biggest parts in the freaking last arc is he actually returned, um, in the Elf Reincarnation arc. And he also has Fauna's fire spirit Salamander now accompanied by his side. And essentially he's also given a, another new arm, but it's made out of fire. So I think it's pretty badass, pretty cool, and it's dope that Fuegoleon came back and everything. It was so he had some great moments in the arc too. Um, so yeah, and I definitely did like the moment how he fought alongside his sister and how him and his sister have this lovely bond um, to where you know she pushes him to try to be better and he wants to be better and stuff like that. So I definitely did like that. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I forgot, I forgot to mention that point. Like I said. I, I, I'm, these reviews are kind of just like off the top of my head type of things of what I can remember and stuff like that. I'm not really going too much in depth, like say, for example, my fairy tale arc reviews, where I go in, in extreme depth about the fairy tale story. Here, I don't because I'm just going to just give you kind of a brief summary of what happened and stuff like that. But um, Nozelle and Fuigoleon are like, listen, you know, Julius said you can't do it, and they actually put the Black Bulls on a mission, and they need Asta and everything. And essentially, the mission that they're sent is they're, uh, Asta, in order to prove his um, innocence, is essentially going to have to find a devil from the outside of the Clover Kingdom to prove that, oh, they were consp- this devil was conspiring and led all this events to this whole thing. And they got to find more information about the devil, um, to prove uh, Asta's innocence so he can be let free. And Dalmatio eventually talks to Julius about it, and Dalmatio's like, all right, fine. I'll let it slide for now, but let this be known, Asta. I'll freaking do whatever is my power to prove that you're guilty for all this, which he's not guilty at all. He just is using the power of a devil, which I definitely do like when we get to the end of what is the anime when him and his devil eventually plan or make a pact to work together and everything. So, um, yeah. Now, in the meantime, um, this is when, you know, others are trying to look around for clues and information about the devil and stuff like that, that they're looking for and everything. Um, Cutting over to the Noel thing, um, Nozelle actually told Noel to go see one of the magic squad captains, Dorothy, um, to go talk more about um, her mother's death. And the thing is, Noelle goes goes there. And Dorothy's like, okay, let me take you to my dream world, which I forgot to mention, um, which I'll get into a bit um, about Dorothy's dream world too, because she's like, we can't talk about this in the public, otherwise you will be cursed. So Noelle is taken to her dream world. And essentially how Dorothy's dream world works is whatever you envision that pops up in her head, um, she can just poof. Like in the last fight, the elf controlled Dorothy. They made her think of like door exit and the elf controlled Dorothy thought of, well, doors to get out and stuff like that. It's a pretty cool wacky battle and her magic's very damn OP because if she fucking traps you and she's got control of you, you're freaking done. But um, I definitely did like this scene because, you know, you have the whole scene where it's like, Dorothy brings like an like a fake Asta, which is an Asta that Noel in her mind wants um Asta to hit on her and kind of ask her out, but she's too flustered and I love that. And the fact that she brings even a fake copy of Nozelle, but she even says that's how Nozelle truly feels about you and everything. So yeah, so we kind of see that Nozelle actually deeply cares about his about Noel, like damn near you could say he's an overprotective freaking brother, which it's very crazy to see. He's just a stoic and stern character that he doesn't show that side of him and everything. But um, essentially here, um, Dorothy goes on to say that, well, yes, your mother was killed by a curse from the devil named Magicula. And this kind of furthers Noelle's whole perspective of, well, this is her goal is to avenge his mother's death and defeat the devil Magicula, which eventually ties into what you, you know, Vanica 
and the whole Spade Kingdom stuff there and everything. Now, in terms of what Oz is doing, Austin company actually go to meet Gordon's family for the first time. And his family, well, looks just like Gordon. They're all unique in their own damn ways. Essentially, the whole thing here is they're trying to find the whole thing about curses and everything. And there's obviously curse. So Gordon's father knows much about curses. So when they look up, though, there's curses. There's like only two curses. One in the freaking um, Clover Kingdom, which is from Oster, really. And then there's another one in the Heart Kingdom um, and stuff like that. So, yeah. Um, we also get another interesting thing with Finral here where we get kind of his motivation for the, I guess, I'm guessing a remainder of the story is the fact that, you know, Longorus was obviously infected by an elf spirit and everything. And, you know, you get a nice reunion between Finral and Longorus where Longorus actually deeply regrets what he freaking did. Um, Excuse me. He he did and everything, and um, he eventually apologizes um, to him. And obviously, Finral is like, "You're always gonna be my brother, no matter what." Um, also, at the same time, um, this girl named Lady um, Finnis is there in Longris's room now. Lady Finnis, if is shown in a few backstories regarding um, Finral. And essentially, Lady Finnis is essentially supposed to be wed to be to um, Longris, but, you know, Longris kind of hasn't taken the whole thing of, well, a, I guess you can say proposing to her and taking her hand in marriage. And she's kind of forced to do it. It's, a, it's the whole kind of royal marriage thing. But the thing that kind of encourages um, Finral is the fact that he tells Longris, I'll do whatever, anything within my power um, to marry Lady Finnis and make her my own. Um, because we even cut back to some of the flashbacks with it. Um, we see a Finral in terms of Lady Finnis. It seemed like Finnis had something, some sort of feelings for Finral. And clearly she seemingly does have feelings for Finral. And clearly we see that Finral has feelings for her. Now, the funny thing is like, okay, uh, you know, freaking Longress is like, yeah, you can say that, but you know you're a deep freaking womanizer. So how you say you're going to marry Lady Finnis when you're fawning over and hidden on every other freaking hot girl you see in the public? Which, that's whole, Finral's kind of whole story, the standpoint. He has to try to find a way to get over women and only focus and think about Lady Finnis. Which I find it funny how every time he sees a very attractive lady, he's like, no, 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 no! I can't think of her. I have to think of Lady Finnis because she, I want her to be my wife, um, which I find freaking hilarious. I do think Finral will get over this urge of, you know, fawning over and trying to hit on other women. Um, and he, I think he will probably eventually hook up with um, Finnis by the end of the Black Clover storyline. But I will do like the whole one thing that, you know, Longris, even though he's diff, even though he's somewhat kids that, you know, kind of dick is persona off, he essentially goes on to tell um, Finral in his head, like, listen, or he tells Finral, he's like, listen, if you think I'm going to let you win that easy, you're wrong. I'm not going to let you lose. So it definitely shows that Longris is okay with marrying Finnis as well. Um, and this is kind of his whole redemption arc, which I definitely do like, especially by the time you get to the next arc and stuff like that. Um, or actually, let me talk about that um, because, you know, it's the whole thing. It's the whole thing there where um, Longris isn't really getting work done and he's been taken off for the incident and stuff like that. Eventually, you know, come to the point where he, you know, confronts, you know, because everybody's, you know, starting to get popular with, you know, and everybody's liking him, like the girls freaking love him because he's attractive as all get up and stuff like that. And he's very popular. So you have a fight, you have a whole competition where Longris and, you know, have a match where the whole stakes are, the, where, the, where the stakes are, the winner be, is going to become the new vice captain and the loser um, or if Yuno wins, he becomes the new vice captain. But the loser of this match um, ends up um, will will end up. Um, I guess you can say will will end up leaving the Golden Dawn. And Vengeance hears of this. He doesn't know if he's like 
going to do this. But then again, he's like, you know what? I'm just going to let this happen and everything. So Longris goes up against um, Yuno, and Yuno absolutely defeats him with crazy ease. Um, and Longris accepts reality is like, I have to train and I have to get stronger. And he tells um Vaughn just like listen I didn't want to do this but I feel like I need to get stronger I need, need to feel like I need to get my head in the right place before I come back um now he did say he was going to come back to the golden dawn um so he goes on he leaves he tells Finnis goodbye and he said and he says to Finnis um listen if my brother ever returns tell him I tell him I left um to go on a journey um and that's it and we don't see Longris come back till well the I guess the end of the anime um, when he confronts Yuno after he got beaten by the one Spade Kingdom dude, um, absolutely freaking humiliated, to be honest. Um, and also this makes Yuno the new vice captain of the um, Golden Dawn. Um, and I definitely do like this whole Longer's redemption, you know, um, atoning for his actions type of thing. I definitely do like this because it makes him now more likable character now because I think he understands the wrongings of his doings and he wants to be a better character um, or a better, not a better, better character, a better person. Um, so I definitely like what they're doing with Longus and I can't wait to see what they're going to do when they, that whole thing comes full circle um, and stuff like that. Now, the thing is, um, because the whole news that there's apparently a curse in the Heart Kingdom, well, Mimosa and her brother actually, when they were younger, went to the um, went on a trip to the Heart Kingdom to learn some stuff from them. So Mimosa, Asta, Noel, and Finral all um, travel to the Heart Kingdom. Now they encounter this guy called um, Gaj uh, Gaja. Um, and the whole thing is there is he's like one of the most powerful wizards in the heart kingdom eventually it gets to the point where he's kind of hospital, hospital, hospit, hospital, hospital, hospit, you know what? I'm not going to say that. I'm not gonna say that he was welcoming you to them. And then all of a sudden he just comes out and he freaking starts fighting these guys. Now this guy has lightning magic, like luck, but on a more powerful scale and everything. And he's freaking crazy. Noel fights him. And she's kind of holding her own a bit. Um, now, um, Gaja actually freaking gets the upper hand on them. And the fight's pretty cool. I do like the fight. And that's when we also see the type of word, type of magic he writes out and stuff like that. Now, in the meantime, Asa gets split up from the group. And he's confronted by one of the great, you know, spirits, um, um, Undine, um, who we later find out is the water spirit um, to Laura Peshka, the queen of the heart kingdom. Um, and everything, and Asta goes up against her, and the thing is, well, the Heart Kingdom wants Asta's devil and stuff like that. Eventually, what happens is Asta senses, with the help of um, Nero, senses the, you know, presence of Laura Peshka, the queen of the Heart Kingdom, and that's when we kind of get into the whole thing about Laura Peshka. Now, we also get this whole new power scaling thing called, you know, magic stages, and it kind of is like the new power scaling type of element in this whole thing that can determine a strength. And essentially, you know, we kind of find out here, one, Laura Peshka, the queen, is actually cursed, um, actually has a curse on her, and you can clearly see it on her stomach and everything. She's got curse from um, the devil, Magicula, friend shocking that it has ties to Noel um, and everything. And um, um, Laura Peshka goes on to say, listen, you guys can't freaking fight a devil yet because uh, you guys need to be uh, uh, stage one or greater mage stage to uh, go against a devil or at least compete against one. Otherwise, you guys, if you walk into this now, you guys are fucking dying. I'm just going to tell you that um, and stuff like that. So, um, yeah. And the, and anyway, since Laura Petschka also knows that Asa has a devil within him, she asked, also, listen, I'm going to need your power to help defeat the Magicula. Um, otherwise, we're completely freaking doomed. Um, anyways, we actually cut over for a bit to Vanessa, Luck, and Magma, and they were kind of doing some scouting and reconnaissance, uh, reconnaissance about the other region area, and that's the Diamond Kingdom, see what's going on there. Um, since we know the Diamond Kingdom is pretty hostile nation, but we know that Mars went back to try to 
fix the Diamond Kingdom. Well, lo and behold, they kind of stumble upon um, and looking from a distance, this one mage with this overwhelming freaking power take out and kill these Diamond um, Kingdom mages. And it, this guy is so powerful, it gets to the point, we know Luck likes to fight powerful opponents, but this was like the one time Luck is like, yeah, um, I don't think I'm going to fight that guy because uh, he's way out of my league and his power is making me fucking intimidated right now. Um, so this is obviously, and then too, you see the logo of the Spade um, Kingdom, um, which is everything, which obviously foreshadows the Spade Kingdom threat over looming threat but you know when it's revealed to see that oh the spade kingdom guys don't fucking play around if they got guy if they got luck a guy who loves to fight to be like yeah this is the one fight i'm gonna probably pass um it goes to show that these guys are fucking threats um so yeah and then it's kind of also hard to see because we eventually know later on like in in the, after the six month time skip, like the freaking Spade Kingdom has damn near almost taken complete control over the um, Diamond Kingdom. So you have to wonder how Fauna, um, Fauna, Fauna Mars, um, I forgot the one redhead guy in his yeah the one redhead guy um is doing in terms of that. You know you have to wonder like are these characters like alive or are they were they killed? Um, and stuff like that. So it's definitely interesting to see and everything. So yeah. Now, coming back to Austin's group. Now, Lord Petsch goes on to say that Austin narrow stages are called the arcane stages, which essentially is a stage where magic users can, their magic cannot be measured. Well, one, because uh, one, Austin has no magic. And then two, well, so, um, narrow kind of has this type of weird, you know, forbidden magic that she's using and stuff like that. Now, Lord Petrico goes on this fact that, you know, Magicula hails from the Spade Kingdom. And Lord Petrico's whole plan is the fact that, well, you know, um, in six months' time, she wants to attack the Spade Kingdom. Um, so that's the whole thing. Eventually, they eventually inform Julius of this whole plan. Julius is like, okay, that means every Magic Knight in the Clover Kingdom is going to have to train and get strong within six months to get to this whole stage one type of thing to at least combat um obviously the looming threat and i forgot to mention the heart kingdom environment definitely does i definitely do like it's kind of like a forest type of way it, it's like a forest lush green forest type of area and it's crazy because laura petchka has all this like magical power she can actually somewhat control the land water terrain area of the heart kingdom which is very crazy um and everything so i definitely do like that as well hold on a quick second guys okay i'm sorry i'm getting to the end but um yeah um she can control this thing and it's like i definitely do like the environment of the heart kingdom we don't see much of it but we see some of it to where it's like okay this looks like a very nice area and stuff like that and a nice peaceful land to live and everything the peaceful the people in the country are very peaceful and everything and stuff like that it definitely gave me the witch's forest type of land vibes and stuff like that with a little bit of difference and stuff like that but anyways um the plan is well um julia says we're gonna send some majors from the clover kingdom to go train with lord apechka and their um five stage zero mages to go get stronger in the six months time um and the members are going to be Austin, Noel, Mimosa, Nero, Real. Charmy actually isn't supposed to go in the first place. She kind of tags along. Um, and I forgot to mention about fucking Charmy, too. Sorry I forgot to mention this, guys. Sorry I forgot to mention this. So Charmy actually is freaking crazy strong beyond belief. Like, if she wasn't OP as shit, she actually has a legit reason for being OP as fudge, man. And I forgot to bring this up in the last week because, again, I was rushing. I want to talk about the damn twists and turns. So we actually find out the reasoning why Char Charmy is, like, kind of petite and short and everything and why she doesn't have, like, the body type structure of, say, a mimosa, Vanessa. Uh, yeah, a, mim a mimosa, Vanessa, or even Noelle um, from the standpoint, well, she's actually half human, half dwarf. And in her fight against the elf reincarnated Rill, um, she transforms into this whole 
um, dwarfed it where she looks damn near like a typical anime character instead of the whole petite, you know, obviously lolly type of character she's got or she's funny. She, she gets all fucking serious. Two, her magic is also changed from the standpoint as where it isn't a lamb. It turns into like a freaking hungry, hungry wolf. And the wolf is OP. And when she takes the stage, she is OP as shit. And you don't want to fuck with Charmy when you piss her the fuck off. What I find funny is the fact that it actually infatuates Rill. And Rill actually is in love with Charmy. So you kind of got a somewhat of a love triangle going on. Charmy is in love with you know, but Rill's in love with Charmy and everything. So I do find it freaking hilarious. And everything, but like I said, Charmy tags along with this whole thing. Um, she doesn't really go from the jump, she just tags along. She kind of sneaks in like Austin's outfit and she's there. Um, Magna goes because he kind of wills himself to go, like, I want to train and get stronger. Um, Charlotte Rose, um, Rose, Rose Lay goes as well, um, to get stronger too. Um, Leopold goes. Um, and Luck goes, and that kind of inspires um, Magna to go, and then Finrol goes as well to get stronger, and, you know, this is when the arc ends, and we don't return after a six-month time skip after characters have new designs and stuff like that, and they're much stronger and everything, and you kind of go through some of the training routines, and it's very much interesting to see how strong um, these five-stage mages are of the Heart Kingdom, and I definitely did like how they put them in the type of um element based on what their you know their magic element is to get better at but um yeah i definitely did like this arc for the foreshadowing purposes and it definitely is the beginning of when all fucking hell breaks loose which is starting the next arc which is the spade kingdom arc um so yeah so um next week will be the last uh video in terms of me talking about anything currently story-wise of anything past before we get to the manga and stuff like that for Black Clover. So next so next time, um, we'll be talking about, I'm guessing you could say the first half of the Spade Kingdom arc, where the Spade Kingdom arc makes their attack, and we get a bunch of twists and turns in regards to Yuno's character, um, and we see how dangerous the members of the, sh of the Dark Triad are, and how fucking deadly they are, and how my god they're one of the most op freaking characters i've seen in any damn anime period um and stuff like that but other than that um i'm gonna get out of here guys hopefully you guys have a great day on our channel this video until then guys i'll catch you guys in the next video peace